We're back, baby. It's a charity try. Pitch your free throws because they are free. Fisher, Tosopolis, Snacks, Kreider back Monday. It is May 15th, about halfway through May, guys. NBA playoffs, fullest of swings. We're heading to the conference finals. We got a bubble rematch. So everyone calling it the – some people calling it the Mickey Mouse trophy. Some people saying it's staged. Some people saying the bubble doesn't really count. Well, guess what? We're seeing an exact replica of what we saw in the bubble. Miami versus Boston, home court advantage to Boston. Lakers versus Nuggets, home court advantage to the Nuggets. Very exciting stuff. The last team to get into the conference finals was the Celtics, who absolutely bamboozled and dominated Philadelphia 76ers. We'd love to get your guys' takes on it. And Obviously, as a Celtics fan, I'll go last and I'll give mine. Well, I'm really curious to hear your take more because last week you were calling for your head coach's head. I was pissed. I was. He wasn't. He, his adjustments were poor, and he threw it back in my face, happily so, in game six. And then game seven, Tatum, who had a very rough first three quarters of game six, went scorch earth in the fourth quarter of game uh, went for scor- scor- scorch earth in the fourth quarter of game six, and absolutely dominating, hitting multiple threes, uh, came out and literally set a record breaking steps record he set earlier against the kings and his playoffs for 50 points in a game seven tatum goes for 51 absolutely dominant brown was great brogdon was great and Embiid and harden as we saw in game six and they carried it over in game seven collapsed and now doc rivers harden and Embiid all in limbo in somewhat in some respects um I've seen people call him the fake MVP, Philadelphia fans getting on him. Uh, a lot of disappointment over there for JoJo. Uh, Harden might be on his way out, and Rivers uh, might have coached his last game in Philadelphia. And I feel great. Um, Miami is going to be a tough test on paper. They're not you know, anything special, but Spolstra, Butler have been there before. Spolstra, multi-time champ. So can't take them lightly. Um, as we said with the Knicks, uh, can't take Miami lightly. And I feel like... Some people took Miami a little lightly for the Knicks and Miami, you know, again, threw that in their face. Uh, Stephen A. Smith, uh, you know, as we've seen on TV, has been absolutely depressed for the last 72 hours. Um, But I feel great. Missoula uh, showed me, showed everyone that he's the right man for the job. He can get us there, and now he just has to get over the next hump uh, and and get us to the promised land of the finals. Um, And if Butler – and I mean, if Tatum can do half of what he did – and if Brown could do what he did, I mean, Miami is going to have some serious trouble. Um, those two together, when they're on, are absolutely dominant. And Brown played a complete game offensively, and Tatum was what we wanted him to be and expected him to be at the start of the playoffs. Well said. I, I think, you know, more than anything, it was just a really hard-fought series. It looked like out of all the matchups in this round of the playoffs, that definitely, you know, was probably the most taxing on everyone's bodies. And... You know, your guys are probably super tired. So um, hopefully they can make quick work of Miami so they can get some much needed rest. Um, But, you know, I imagine that drains you mentally and physically going game seven, you know, going back and forth, getting blown out, blowing a team out. You know, it's just there's just so many different things that happen that series. Um, And of course, in the spotlight too, probably the most eyes on it out of any of the series in the playoffs because, you know, it's Boston versus Philly. So. Um, yeah, just looking to see if those guys can can stay hot and take care of business against Miami, which they should. Mm. Should yes, we'll see though. Yeah, I think they should. I think they should, gentlemen, sweep them. But you never know with this team. The series price right now at BetOnline.ag. Love BetOnline. You know, use our promo code Believe get fifty percent off your your welcome bonus uh, on your first deposit. They are minus five twenty five to win the series. Wow. Uh, so if that shows you any indication of how heavy of a favorite they are, so if you were to take the Heat to win the series, they'd be plus 420. Um, in comparison to the Lakers nice. and the Nuggets, the Nuggets are minus 165. So mm. that one's a lot closer. Um, you know, I, I was looking at just kind of ESPN analyst prediction of what their, their series is going to be, and a lot of them had Lakers in seven. A lot of people had Lakers in six. Um including Ramona Shelburne, who was a guest on The Laid Show, our, our good buddies Aaron Cohen and Lamar Odom. Um, so that one is predicted to be a lot more, cl- uh, a lot closer than the Heat Celtics. But like you said, Josh, you can't take the Heat lightly. But I, I completely agree with Nick. This is a, an awesome opportunity for the Celtics to get a good amount of time off 
and um, but they have to go take care of business. And Missoula has to continue to grow as a coach. Um, I think, yes, you were a little you were a little early to call for his head, but I don't necessarily think he's he's automatically the right guy for the job either. I think he has to continue to prove himself. Getting beat in the Eastern Conference Finals is also not enough. Um, not with this team, not with this roster, not with how they played during the regular season. Not with their roster either, Miami. And, 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 and yeah, and of course, not against this Miami team. Hmm. Yeah, I. That's weird, dude. The I'm. Team I'm. Can't be half the player because that's not enough. Just FYI. That he was in Game Seven. I know what you meant, but he can't be half the player. He has to be. He has to be operating Four at a high level. Four fifths. I mean, look, we don't need him to go for fifty-one every game, but to have him go for thirty something, you know is that should do the trick in my book. Um, yeah, people going with the Lakers heavy. I I think this could be Jokic's coming out party. Not that he already hasn't had several at this point, but it, it seems though that people still disrespect and have no faith in the back-to-back MVP. And yes, he hasn't gotten there. And yes, this LeBron has won multiple times. AD has won. And this team has, you know, been there. But they have the home court. It wouldn't shock me the slightest if, you know, the Nuggets really came out <laughs> strong in game one and, and showed the world who, you know, we've discussed may not get to see them play that all that often on national television. Like the, the Nuggets don't get the run that these other teams get. They're a West Coast team. They're not a major market. So I, I feel like people know Jokic for what he is, but they don't know him in the seeing eye test. And I think now in the grandest stage, you know, against the Lakers in the West, I, I think he's going to really get to shine and, and show the people what he really is all about. So I'm, I'm excited for Jokic. Who would you uh, rather see as a Celtics fan? Who would I rather play? Lakers, bro. Come on. You gotta, I want it. I want it all. I want yeah, LeBron. I want the Lakers. Okay. I mean, like, obviously for the novelty factor, sure. But who do you think you match up better against? Still the Lakers? No, no. I think we match up better against the Nuggets based off what I saw last series. If Horford and Rob Will can play like they did against Jokic, who I think is a better player than Embiid, but if they can play like they did against, you know, Embiid against Jokic, I have faith in throwing Derek White, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown um, at Murray, um, at Porter Jr. and Gordon with Tatum. Tatum's really strong, played it, had a strong, very strong defensive series. Brogdon as well. Uh, I think we match up well against Denver. Um, but again, they're, they're these are two really strong teams in the West. Really strong teams. Teams, I think, I have to go back and look. Do we have these teams going there in our preview? Uh, I think someone had the Lakers going to the finals. It's very possible. I I want to say we might have both been on Celtics Nuggets, though. That That sounds... That sounds right. Um, Get my phone. I dropped it. I have it in my notes. I will. I will say, it's a tough. It's a conundrum because on one hand, you're taking, you're saying you have the best matchup against the best player remaining in the playoffs, in my opinion. Mm, versus fair opinion. LeBron, who's been there and done it before, and and mm-hmm. like you mentioned, Anthony Davis has too. But um, I, I more so say LeBron because he's been there multiple times. He has seen every version of the finals at this point. Um, and, but I still think there's another level for him to get to, or maybe there's another level that he's not able to get to that he previously was in times where he's been to the finals. But thankfully for that team, they have a deep roster and they have Anthony Davis too. So I just, uh, I want the, the Miami Boston series to be competitive. I hope it's not a gentleman sweep, but if it mm. is, like I mentioned on our amp show, um, check that out on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. I want the games to be close. I don't want there to be... I, I don't want to just be tuning into the Western Conference Finals because the Eastern Conference Finals are terrible games and they're all blowouts. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I mean, the, the blowout last game, I was telling my dentist this morning, if you can't really hear me or see me, half my left side of my face is Droop City. Um powering through it my teeth are killing me um but i was telling him he's like oh was it a good game i was like on on, on sunday i go no not really he goes well you're a boston fan i go yeah but objectively like it sucked because we blew them out you know and no one wants to watch a blowout 
Um, obviously for me, it was amazing. Tatum was awesome. You know, he again, record setting night, uh, in TD garden. Uh, I, I, I kind of disagree. I think that like for you, like it's not boring to watch. Like if you're a fan it's game seven, like seeing your team go off is fun. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing for three quarters, but I'm saying as objectively as like a basketball fan, like it would have been cool. Like as a ba- as a basketball fan, not as a Celtics fan to see the game be more exciting. I certainly think the Philly fans didn't have a good time. Uh, I, I know our buddy Abe Granoff had a, a terrible time. And he's pissed. He's time. calling Embiid fat on social media. So he's t- he's pulling no punches, which is kind of aggressive. I think he's in pretty good shape, but I, I understand like the sentiment. Like, Compared well, to Abe, he's fat. Yeah, Abe's very Abe's. You know, Abe's, Abe's a little twink. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say that if I was Abe, I'd be very disappointed in in the showing that his two superstars have it was it was it was paltry um all right well speaking of bad showings once again on instagram live of all the things to be addicted to not addicted to you know drugs alcohol gambling this guy's addicted to showing his glock on instagram live yeah what are you like i just don't i just don't he's so obsessed it seems seems with being something he isn't rather than enjoying rather than enjoying being something he is he is like you have everything that everybody could ever dream and want at your fingertips nine figure salary playing basketball for you're the face of a franchise on a growing team you are a team that could really contend next year could could have maybe even contended this year uh if all the pieces were in the right place which because of you they weren't in some respects and yet in your off season, rather than growing, changing, getting better, you do the same dumb thing you were suspended for just a month and a half ago. He's gonna he might miss half the season. Yeah, I don't know what it's gonna take at this point. I saw a funny tweet. It said you get a chance to have two hundred and forty million dollars over five years, but you can't flash a gun. Could you do it? It's like just how cynical that sounds and how how like stupid that sounds. But he literally can't do it. Like he literally cannot resist himself. And no. I do not know. I, I do not know what's going through his head to think, oh, you know what? This is a good idea. Like, yeah. why put yourself in that situation? I mean, Kwame Brown was criticizing him. So that that's all you really need to know. The guy was <laughs> like, look, I own multiple guns. Kwame has a ranch. He's from Alabama. But he was like, when you are in this situation, and you continue to do the behavior that got you suspended. Forget about what the behavior even is at that point, right? Like, <clears throat> I saw something else that was funny. Uh, Fat Joe was like, he's trying to get himself out of the NBA. He doesn't want to be in the NBA anymore. And then I also saw Juan Toscano Anderson, who's a current NBA player, saying, are all of his friends police officers? Because, like, they seem to get footage of everything. And I thought that was really funny, too. Um, but, like, I just... I just don't understand it. And Josh, you said he's the face of a franchise, and he had he was on the cusp of becoming a, a, a face of the NBA, a cover athlete type guy. And um, you know, very quickly he has this past season one eightyed himself from a public image standpoint. So, I, I mean, you mentioned like yes, yeah, he's ad- he's addicted right to to showing guns on Instagram Live. Um, you threw in there alcohol. Like, remember that was part of the equation with when he was on the plane, on the private plane, he was like pulling from handles in, in almost every single scenario. So I just think, you know, at the time when we said, oh, you know, he needs as much time away from the game as he possibly can have in that eight game suspension. It's not enough time to really reevaluate, change habits and and make new choices. And this is the off season. This is a, a true amount of time and maybe not even enough time even still, but to head in the right direction. So hopefully, you know, he can start to do that because we all love to see what he can do on the court, but it's just as baffling. That do you think that it's a continued behavior? Do you think that, um, like, if he was on a different team with a different roster, with more veteran presence, with like a guy who he could really kind of just learn from, not you know on the court but off the court, you know how to become a superstar, how to conduct himself as a superstar. You think this would be happening? Like if he was in LeBron's locker room or if he was in, 
You know, I mean, I, I don't LeBron, know. LeBron, like, maybe like one of these like maybe like bigger guys, sure. But this is a really deep. This is a deep rooted issue, clearly. And this guy's. I knew this was a problem when he came out from his eight game suspension, doing the gritty, running out the tunnel like he'd been hurt for like a year, not suspended for flashing a gun. He's acting like it was almost blasphemous in his body language that he was even suspended in the first place. You would right. never have known why he missed time for that. Or you would never have known it was for a negative reason <laughs> why he came out the tunnel. So I'm looking at that guy and that I'm like, okay. And his post game presser, I'm like, he's, he, he's not changed. He doesn't care. This is the, who, this is who this guy is. Not even that, but he's not trying to change. Like I, no. Luca, Luca gets a lot of criticism and obviously a guy that I watch every single night that he plays um, because of how whiny he is and how much he talks back to the refs and how much he complains. But there is always a point where in the post game pressers, when it gets to a boiling point with that criticism, that he goes, I need to be better at that. And then if you go watch his next three games, he doesn't say anything to the refs. Eventually he works himself back into the habit and he starts complaining again. But at least I know that he's trying to get better at it and being honest with himself about it. Now, it doesn't mean that it's easy to, to shirk a, a learned behavior like that, but um, I appreciate that from a guy that you know is on a team that I'm a fan of and it's a, a superstar in this league. I think you had Danny Green in that locker room recently. You had Kyle Anderson, who spent a lot of time with the Spurs. You have Steven Adams right now that's in that locker room. Like, there are vets that have been in that locker room, but you have to be willing to listen to those guys. I don't think any of those guys, to me, seem like – I mean, the heavy-handed kind of, hey, I'm going to be your big bro, and, like, don't do this, don't do that. Like, that never works, right? He's a, he's a 23-year-old man. Like, he's, he's a grown man. He doesn't want anyone telling him what to do. It's also not their job. Like it's not their right. like yeah. Like it's not like yeah. You lead by a lot of guys would be like you lead by example. Not a lot of guys are going to be like dude. Like what are you doing? Who are your friends? Like because like you're saying toss. Like he's not going to listen to that. He's going to be like what are you? Who are you that you're talking to me? I score twenty five points per game plus. I'm the best player in our team. We are where we are because of me. D don't run your mouth at me. Right. No. And that's kind of what I'm saying is that like. Those guys are vets, right? But they're not like superstar vets. They're not Chris Pauls. They're not, you know, LeBrons. They're not ADs. They're not guys that have been in the league that have been the superstar, the best player on their team. You know, Steph Curry, like if he had a guy in that locker room, and of course there's only a few of those, you know, but if he had a guy that was on par with his playing level or better than him that could guide him a little bit, Maybe things oh, are yeah, different. for sure. But the sad thing is, is he was a second overall pick. Right. He, he was drafted to. Yeah, yeah. But he's drafted to be Steph Curry, Chris Paul. He's drafted <clears> to be that guy. I get it. It's just unfortunate. Like, he was never going to be in a position where he had, like, a great team. Or, like, you, you, we've heard it from the Rockets camp a little bit. Like, John Wall said, these guys are so immature. You think maybe even the city has something to do with it? Because as we all know, Memphis isn't the safest city out there. No, it's not a good city, and I'll come right out and say it. it's kind of trash. It's kind of trash. Like I've been. Like there's no, uh, there's no. If this food's good, like, but there's no way around it. It's like not like if he's in New York or if he's in L.A. or if he's, you know, if he's in Dallas or. Yeah, I think I think the city thing could swing it in a positive way or in a negative way, right? Like I think if it were happening in L.A., it could have been even worse. It could have been better that he had LeBron, but it could have been worse because you're in the media capital of the world. And New York could have been bad too. Those cities yeah. go either way, but like a city like Milwaukee where there's like I remember when J.R. Smith, like there's nothing to do in Cleveland. Like a city yeah. like that, like could have been beneficial, I, I would imagine. I would hope. But it's it's a very unfortunate situation for a, a young man who now has a massive mountain to climb to True. get back into the good graces of the world. Uh and the and the A. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, lighter note. There are lighter notes to be had. Wembenyama is getting drafted, or we'll know where Wembenyama is going tomorrow, uh, which is very exciting. Um, Toss. I could not find our notes of who we picked, so we'll have to go dig in the archives. But I think somebody had Celtics Nuggets. I, I thought I had. It. I thought I wrote it down. So not a crazy pick, but nonetheless, could be the right pick. Uh, you had a game for us, my friend. We played. Yeah, we've been playing like a lot of games that have been a lot of fun. And well, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's the same game that we played last week. 
Last week, we played it with MLB players. This week, we're going to play it with NFL players. It's guess the team based off of players that I will name that are currently on the roster of that team. Um, I will try, I will name five players. After each player that I name, you each get an opportunity to guess. Once we get to the fifth player, I'll let, it'll be a race to see who gets the guy first because at that point, the guy that I've picked has a level of notoriety where you will then know the team, or at least you should know the team. Um, all the other guys are, are quite difficult, and with the NFL, those rosters are huge. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of guys that bounce around all the time. Um, and, I and this is current, them. current like who's all currently on the roster, not this last is, season's roster? Right, this is right now. So these okay. teams have brought on a lot of guys that then will get cut as well. So th- these rosters are big right now. Um, so I'll just go out and say that. But I have five teams that, that y'all are going to guess, and we can just uh, we can just get into it. Uh, so for the first team, Cameron McDonald. Josh? I'm going to go with the... I'm going to go w- with the uh, Packers. That's correct. You got it. Oh, wow. Did you know? Me? No. That's right. That's correct. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to go play a scratch off today. Your face is numb, but your brain isn't. There you go. Okay. Good for you, Josh. Nick, you <laughs> first pick here. Let's go one for one on both ones. Okay. Second team. Tim Jones. <laughs> it could be anybody. <laughs> Literally could be anybody. Uh, Pavilion's <laughs> checkout guy. The... The Indianapolis Colts. That's incorrect. Josh? Slow motion with me. Sheesh. I might have to put We're it on a time. Lost, uh, I know, I know. Los Angeles Rams. Pitchcock. Incorrect. Nick, you get to guess first again since Josh took so long. Ben Batch. Um, Chiefs. Josh? Uh, Titans. Incorrect. Tavon Campbell. Josh. Ravens? Nope. Nick. Seahawks. Incorrect. D. Ernest Johnson. Nick. Browns. Incorrect. Josh. He wasn't the Browns. He, he was in the Browns. Um is he on the Saints now? He's not. All right. Both of you are on the clock here. Clavon Chason. Oh, Jags. That's correct. Yeah, so Dearness Johnson. Dearness Johnson you know, wins the Jags? He's on the Jags. Yeah, there's some new new news for you guys. Uh, <laughs> Is okay. that the, Chase sounds like our fifth guy? Jesus, dude. Ruthless. I was first. Ellis, whatever. Fine. Okay. Moving on to the next team. Natani Muti. The Dolphins. Josh. Wow, that was a good guess. Um, I'm going to go with the Commanders. Okay. I'm just going to start. He sounds like a dolphin. Guys. I'm not going to give you a guess every single time. Tyler Hall. Titans. Texans. Roderick Teamer. He was on the Chargers. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Niners. Incorrect. Broncos. Brian Hoyer. Raiders. He is on the Raiders. Dude, that roster is so Pats heavy now. It's literally all former Pats guys. I know. I, I looked at it the other day. That's why I know. All right, moving on. Dennis Daly. Bengals. Incorrect. Ravens. Incorrect. Carlos Watkins. Texans. Nope. Cowboys. No. Rashad Benton. <laughs> Oh man! Chiefs. No, oh, different, God. different Fenton. Jack Fenton. Um, the Water Falcons. Nope. Matt Prater. The Lions. Incorrect. He's not there anymore. What? Where is he? I haven't. But Prater's been in a lot of different places. The Rondale, Falcons. Rondale Moore. Oh, Jones. oh my! Right, uh, no. Cardinals. I'm right. over. Last team. Last team. Cornelius Lucas. 
one of my favorite. No, movies. Eagles. No. Giants. No. Abdullah Anderson. Hmm. Cowboys. No. Uh, um. Broncos. Nope. This is a tough game. <laughs> Troy Apke. Uh, Rams. Nope. Was he ever on the Rams? Probably. The Browns. Incorrect. Jake Fromm. Bills. Bills. Incorrect. Song oh, he's off the Bills. Oh, where is he now? Montez Sweat. Commanders. Yeah. Yeah. I picked some hard ones there. That Let's not tough. do that ever again. <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. Now you guys know. I, now you guys now know, we know Jake Fromm plays. That Dearness you learn a lot. Plays. I didn't Dearness Johnson to the Jags is that's key for this year. Brian Hoyer. I knew he was there in the Raiders. Um good stuff, good stuff. Uh fun game. We'll play another one tomorrow, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh and we'll preview a little bit more of the Lakers Nuggets because they tip tomorrow. Very exciting. Fisher to Sopless Snacks Crider. Hitch free throws because they're free. Charity stripe, we outcha, because we love you. <laughs>